Right, let's bring in our panel, Ben Dominich, editor of the Transom.com and host of the Ben Dominich podcast on Fox News Radio, Jeff Mason, White House correspondent for Reuters and syndicated radio host, Hugh Hewitt. Gentlemen, welcome. Okay. Thanks, Mike. So, Ben, your thoughts looking at the Zoom call tomorrow between bipartisan senators? Look, I should uh, concede at the beginning that I worked for John Cornyn for a number of years. Uh, I have enormous respect for him, but I don't really believe that there's going to be a path forward when it comes to finding some sort of significant progress when it comes to uh, gun control uh, that the left in America would really like to see. Certainly, I, cer I think that there's a lot of people who, you know, in response to Uvalde, are uh, clamoring for something to happen. We see this happen whenever one of these terrible events befalls the country. Uh, but unfortunately, in this case, as in so many, there are very few steps that can be taken when it comes to governmental policy or law that would actually prevent these types of atrocities uh, from taking place. Now, what I, one thing that I do think is, is possible is that you could see the you know push for uh, additional red flag type of opportunities mm -hmm. you know potentially you know some some other small steps but you're not going to actually see anything happen that would prevent this type of specific occurrence from taking place in the future and unfortunately for Americans that's something that I think they just have to come to grips with you cannot flag people who do not you know spark uh, the type of legal reactions that you could see in the case of mental health or other disorders it sounds like the there were a lot of heartbreaking breakdowns there on the ground in Uvalde, and there's investigations looking into that. Hugh, what are your expectations as lawmakers get together to discuss a possible path forward? Well, I want to agree and disagree with uh, Ben, Mike. I, I think John Cornyn is the perfect person, having served on the state Supreme Court of Texas. I think he also ought to consult with Rick Scott, who is governor of Florida. He's now senator from Florida. Uh, passed legislation in the Sunshine State in the aftermath of the Parkland massacre. But I do think there is a path forward if expectations center on how do we protect innocent children like those in Uvalde against monsters like those that came. And that usually means armed police who are well trained on the campus before the monster arrives. And I think if they follow the model from MAD uh, back in the days when the drinking age went to 21, federal dollars in exchange for state legislation, those federal dollars for the police on the campuses uh, would, I think, get some states to study seriously the Florida model and others. But I've got to say, President Biden took us all backwards today by bringing nine millimeter handguns into the discussion because there is simply no consensus, consensus anywhere for uh, uh, denying people the right to own handguns. It doesn't exist. Jeff, outdoors with the birds chirping on a beautiful yes, day here in Washington. <laughs> uh, your thoughts? What are the expectations at the White House? Well, I think, number one, um, you saw this reflected in, in President Biden's comments today, that they see some momentum, or at least they see an opportunity to do something here. And whether it's as far as the left would like to go, I think Ben is spot on in saying that that's certainly not going to happen. But I think this president would be happy to see something. Uh, and, and whether it's on background checks or, I mean, one of the things that, that has been raised is, is changing the uh, age limit for, uh, or the age the age level for when you can buy uh, an automatic weapon. Uh, I think all of those things are things that they're going to look at and consider. All right, let's see if we can get around the horn a little quicker on the issue of Ukraine. The Ukrainians want bigger, badder weapons. The president saying today he does not want to send weapons that could be fired into Russia. Ben, your thoughts? I just don't think this is something that can be adjudicated cleanly. There are a lot of weapons that can be fired into Russia, uh, I think, if you if you point them in the right direction. Uh, but one of the things that I think we certainly can see, uh, you know, from this is the incoherence of the Biden approach uh, to this has been, has been a problem from the get-go. Uh, they clearly do want to support Ukraine. They want Ukraine to win uh, this battle. But there's this uh, incoherence that comes out of the commander-in-chief himself, uh, which is unfortunate and which has uh, continual setbacks, just as it did on the gun issue today. Uh, and it's going to continue to be a problem, I think, when it comes to a clearly defined foreign policy. Hugh, what about Ukraine? What is the U.S. interest in Ukraine at this point? Uh, we are interested in helping Ukraine win back its country. And I think the, the current president ought to take a page from former President Trump, who used to say, I'm not in the business of telling our enemies what I'm going to do or not do. Mm -hmm. Again, a misstep today. All right. And Jeff? Your thoughts? What's the White House thinking in terms of Ukraine at this point? 
Well, I think from the beginning uh, until now, the president has tried to balance um, helping Ukraine without making the war worse or without uh, getting the U.S. and NATO involved in a way that Russia would respond and say this is a Russia versus NATO war instead of a Russia versus Ukraine war. And that's a tough balance. And some people disagree on how he's done that, but I think that's been uh, his guiding principle. Ben, Hugh, Jeff, thank you for spending part of your Memorial Day with the rest of us. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.